general and special education collaboration is key to quality inclusive education for students with disabilities. This video will demonstrate strategies and examples of how to co-plan in an inclusive school. So honestly, I depend an awful lot on the support staff for a lot of the collaboration pieces because teaching all three grades, there's almost always kids in my classroom and I don't really have the freedom of movement that I would like to go into their gen ed courses, but the support staff do. And so they have become quite collaborative with the content area teachers in developing materials and modifying materials. To create lessons, the first person I go to is uh, AJ's close ad adult. She is amazing. And I do believe that I do have the content um, covered, but she also has the creativity. I have the ability to look at the content and say, this is something that AJ needs to work on to work towards his essential elements, where she has this amazing ability to create both um, hands-on paper versions and also uh, computer-based based versions. So he gets the same experience as students in class that are doing both hands-on um, paper, uh, pencil work, but also um, online interactives. When it comes to the labs, AJ is right in there in the middle with all of us. The way the program works for a student in the ALT program is they experience everything in the general education curriculum. We can sit down and really discuss how do we get from point A to point B? And how do we get as much uh, regarding those essential elements um, as possible? Over the next couple of days, we're gonna work on the Samurai project. Mm -hmm. um, we'll probably present sometime next week, I would think. They have an option of what they wanna do for this project. Uh, they could do a poster, they could do like a Google Slides presentation, they could do a video. Uh, some kids every year make like the replica of the samurai weapons and all that kind of stuff. So I know you said you wanted to kind of focus with uh, with Derek on like the samurai armor specifically. Right. Yeah. So what I found was, um, as we know, he is very into coloring his art. And yes, everything. of course. So as we've done in the past where we've had like the slideshow and they've labeled the, um, the samurai. Mm -hmm. I was thinking this year they would have like their own samurai found this template. Wow. And they can I love that. They can they can cut and paste and they can kind of give their samurai their own identity. Beautiful. And then the same labels that they've used in the past. Okay. They can just put these on. They can label it. And I also found um some general questions that um, we're gonna put on like scrolls and they'll yeah. we'll add that. Kind of like a poster I was yeah. thinking this year. Great. And then when they present we can just have them magneted up on the whiteboard right. and then they're going to go through and talk about what each component of the armor is. That's beautiful. To prioritize what content I teach in class, I refer to the NGSS essential elements. There's only um, certain units for which the NGSS provides essential elements. So for the other content units throughout the year, I work with other teachers. Um, I work with the Alt Framework support staff to determine the most appropriate content for our students to learn. So right now, specifically, we're learning about ecosystems and there's, um, the, you know, there's the, the, the three different levels in the essential elements. And um, depending on the students, sometimes they may need to meet different levels or they're all you know able to meet the same level so I review the levels first to see what specific level I want them to reach and then use that to sort of guide which content I emphasize for those students. So being part of an inclusive school has definitely helped me add to my sort of bag of instructional strategies. Um, I've learned some new ones that I can use with students. Sometimes they're appropriate for the whole class Sometimes they're appropriate for just a certain group of students. Um, but, you know, the more tricks you have as a teacher, the better. <laughs> okay. Yep, pick a marker. What color do you want? You want pink? Okay. All right, so. The wolf would eat the bird, right? The wolf would eat the bird. It was just like a draw line. Which bird do you want to have him? Do you want to have him eat this bird? Yeah. Or that one? This one? Okay. This one. All right, so you're going to draw a line. Now your line has to have an arrow that's does pointing it, to who's it look, eating. It look no, it doesn't look weird at all. So is the so the bird is eating the wolf? 
No. No, the so arrow has to point to the eater. So where should your arrowhead go? Um, it's gonna point to the one that's eating. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna point, put the, put the end of the arrow up there, pointing to the wolf. Right now we are working on Newton's laws of motion. So I prioritize the other skills that AJ is learning in other classes. So um, one of the first things that I do is I go to the essential elements and there's really four essential elements. And the one that surrounds Newton's laws of motion is uh, involves height and mass. So when I look at Newton's laws, I figure out where I can really pull the concepts of height and mass, or in this case uh, for AJ, it's better to, instead of mass, it's an object that's difficult to move or an object that's easy to move. So it's uh, prioritizing what he's working on, but also the vocabulary that makes sense to him. We are working on just Newton's laws in general. And for me, the most essential thing was thinking about the motion essential element. And that is for him to understand um, mass and height and how that affects motion. So if I can isolate Newton's third law and use uh, a hands-on manipulative such as a Newton's cradle, we can generate um, models where he can see if I drop one sphere at a certain height, the uh, only one sphere will move on the other side as an opposite reaction. But if I drop two spheres, then we can see two. So as a direct result from his motion, uh, he can see the result. So I can isolate um, at least one of those points, which is how height is involved with motion. We start by um, meeting with the teachers um, and we, we look at the assignment and we say, is it too hard? Is it too easy? Um, can we stick with this same format or do we have to create something new? Are you interested in learning more about inclusive strategies? Visit the TIES website to find more information on the topics listed.